nuclear bombs or nuclear weapons are mentioned, most people usually get the idea that it's a topic for the major powerful nations like the United States, China, Russia, India, Iran, and more lately North Korea, but that not the case. In our own African backyard down south, South Africa developed and built actual working nuclear bombs during the apartheid era. Although, the South African government at that time announced to the world that it have dismantled its nuclear bombs and discontinued its nuclear weapon research and program. South Africa is now currently a member of Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. So the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty uh, entered into force um, in 1970. It was negotiated primarily between the United States and the Soviet Union. Um, it was actually an initiative of Ireland uh, who was very eager to see an end to the nuclear arms race uh, and a commitment from the nuclear armed states at that time to disarm. And so the agreement in the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty is that the nuclear armed states who are party to that treaty, which currently is the United States, United Kingdom, Russia, China, and France, that all of them agree in a legally binding provision to eliminate their nuclear weapons, to negotiate with each other for nuclear disarmament and an end to the nuclear arms race. And in exchange for this, the other states' parties to the treaty will not acquire nuclear weapons, so they are bound by the treaty's non-proliferation obligations. In 1950, South Africa began studying the possibility of developing nuclear technology for peaceful use such as nuclear power production and for medical use. In 1973, Atomic Energy Commission, AEC, pointed out the various benefits of having a nuclear program in the country to make medical isotopes at all. Concurrently, the country had been looking for ways to develop weapons of mass destruction, WMD, since the late 60s. Although, the first interest in developing nuclear weapons started in 1948 immediately after the commissioning of the South African Energy Corporation, SAEC. In 1976, South Africa started having trouble with obtaining nuclear materials through the U.S. However, this was because of South Africa's unsafeguarded enrichment program. The fact that South Africa conducted this work in secret from the outset, making its existence public only when further secrecy was infeasible and never submitted this program to international safeguards from its inception until 1991 is incompatible with South African claims of original peaceful intent during its early period. During the 1970s, South Africa developed its own research reactor, a zero-power reactor called Safari 2 built with US-supplied heavy water and low-enriched uranium. This reactor was decommissioned in the early 1980s. The 70s saw covert collaboration develop between the Israeli and South African nuclear programs, which was camouflaged by the well-known collaboration between these countries on conventional arms. South Africa is known to have received technical assistance from Israel on its weapon program, in exchange for supplying Israel with 300 tons of uranium. But the extent of this assistance is not entirely clear. Several Israeli nuclear scientists, including the Oppenheimer of Israel, Ernst David Bergman, visited South Africa in 1967, and evidence of increasingly close relations accumulate throughout the 70s. Moshe Dayan is reported to have made a secret visit to discuss nuclear weapon cooperation in 1974, including the possibility of nuclear tests, Burroughs, and Windrim 1994. A weapons test sites were commissioned with its accompanying test facilities in late 70s having two shafts. The site was discovered by the Soviet and the government was pressured into shutting it down. The first shaft was 385 meters in depth while the second was 216 meters. The nuclear device is assembled and placed into a container. This is then lowered into the hole until it reaches the detonation position. The hole is sealed off with layers of filling materials such as sand, gypsum and cold tar. Monitoring equipment protected in a lead-lined canister is placed into a chamber above. Throughout the experiment, data is collected to check radiological and seismic activity. The nuclear weapon is then detonated remotely. The explosion generates huge amounts of energy sending out seismic shockwaves. The intense heat and pressure created melt the device and surrounding rocks which then evaporate. Immediately after the explosion, a cavity is formed and as the hot gases cool, a pool of molten rock forms. Temperature and pressure levels continue to fall until eventually the cavity roof caves in, forming at least one crater at the surface. Once the cavity is cool enough, a hole can be drilled and samples retrieved from the point of explosion. The casings made for the atomic bombs and stored at Advina. These are probably in used casings for new bombs. 
Since the 60s SA has been looking for ways to produce weapon of mass destruction, the SA government commissioned Operation Coast in 1983 to produce and develop nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons with its associating protective measures such as suits, masks, etc. As research continued and succeeded in building a gun-type design for what was called cold test in the Pelindaba II nuclear test shaft, South Africa succeeded in building a gun-type weapon, a type of nuclear weapon which works by assembling one part of a nuclear material into another eye high speed. It uses an artillery-type barrel to shoot one hollow nuclear material into a spike which enters and fits. The performance of this type of design usually have low efficiency so uranium is usually used unlike plutonium. The Little Boy bomb which was used against Hiroshima, Japan was a gun-type nuclear device. And to bring you this story, we interrupt our program. An American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima. The White House has just made an important announcement on the war. Buzzing with the news of the atomic bomb. We knew the world would not be the same. We have now added a new and revolutionary increase in destruction. During the 80s, South Africa produced six nuclear bombs with the seventh under development before the country renounced the weapons development program and dismantled all of them in 1989. Although controversial, the United States alleged that South Africa tested its nuclear weapons at the Prince Edwards Islands off the coast of Antarctica in what is today known as the Vela Incident. In September 22, 1979, the U.S. Vela Hotel satellite detected a double flash, which is a precursor for a nuclear blast, although this claim is highly disputed even till date. The United States Department of Defense and Defense Intelligence Agency believes that the double flash is a result of Israeli South African nuclear weapons test. For years, the Israelis' foreign policy towards apartheid South Africa was to condemn apartheid, although it did maintain a mutually beneficial commercial and mutual ties. However, Israel did maintain a diplomatic mission in Pretoria discreetly. According to a renowned researcher Sasha Polakowshirinsky, in his book The Unspoken Alliance, Israel's secret alliance with apartheid South Africa, he wrote that a large number of Israeli government officials and scientists were living and working in the Pelindaba nuclear facility. The International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, after fully inspecting the South African Nuclear Development Program facility in August 19, 1994, reported that all the nuclear devices has been fully dismantled and put in storage. The agency said that six fully developed and one partially developed bomb was dismantled accounting for all South African nuclear weapons and bomb stockpile. The missile technology was pursued till 1992, even after the nuclear weapons program was terminated. However, all ballistic missile development was stopped following South African indication of joining the Missile Technology Control Treaty. Subsequently, supervisions from the United States were sent to monitor the destruction of important facilities meant for ballistic missile and space launch technology. The Nuclear Energy Commission, NEXA, has replaced the AEC in South Africa. The NEXA was established in 1999. Its primary function is to promote the research and development of the nuclear technology for peaceful use. This includes how to process and store nuclear materials safely. This makes South Africa the first nation in the world to give up all its nuclear arms voluntarily.